talking live at the Hearn Center on the campus of the University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri for today's Big 12 battle between the Buffaloes of Colorado and the Missouri Tigers. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kevin Slayton alongside the coach, Tony Baroni. And the last time these two teams met, coach, it was a stunner. Colorado ran the fast break to perfection and shot the three. They're going to have to do the same thing today. And if they're going to win today, they'll have to have another big performance from Jaquay Walls, who had a career-high 34 in their win over Oklahoma State the other night, 25 in the second half, 18 from the line. And his running mate, Kenny Price, had a big game against Missouri last time out. Kenny will have to have another big game. He's an excellent shooter. He also plays good defense in terms of getting his hands on the ball steel-wise. Missouri's going to have to make a decision as to how they're going to guard him coming off screen. He has an excellent quick release from the three. Missouri's surge recently has coincided with the insertion of Keon Dooling into the starting lineup. The freshman has been sensational the last six games, not only with his numbers, but his leadership as well, and he's opened it up inside for Monty Harge. Monty Harge is a problem for Colorado today. They're going to have to make a decision on how they're going to guard him in the low post. If they double-team him, will that be effective? Because when he gets the ball low, he can overpower the defensive center. And Dooling's high school teammate, Clarence Gilbert, looks to get his second straight start for Missouri here this afternoon. Starting lineups and opening tip coming up after this. It's about vision. It's about that part of imagination which lives outside the lines. It's about focus and the engineering freedom to change everything that was or question everything that is. It's insight and the flow of original thinking that can revitalize an industry or rewrite its rules. It's foresight and the discerning intelligence to negotiate surprise and navigate new ground. It's thousands of people visualizing change one company's way of looking at tomorrow. on chips and there's a lot of them okay don't see two percent but i see there's red uh do you want uh crunchy or smooth ultra dry or super dry or well she just took the last one the simple truth is you need all the airtime you can get that's why southwestern bell has flexible plans that let you talk longer than ever paper or plastic honey that's when i swear i'm just she hung up Hey, grab me some chow. For you, my friend, no sweat. Bang. <laughs> Hi, guys. May I take your order? Want personal service? You got it at Sonic. Great food, too, like our famous chicken strip dinner. Served hot and crispy with fries, Texas toast, gravy, and a medium Dr. Pepper, all for a special low price. And this month, try our chocolate-covered cherry sweetheart shake. Pretty sweet service, huh? We'll be home before the commercials are over. Drive in for a change at Sonic. at the Hearn Center in Columbia, Missouri for the battle between Colorado and Missouri this afternoon. Here's a look at our Southwestern Bell starting lineups for Colorado. Price, Jones, Mosley, Renfro, and Jaquay Walls who had that big game in their win over Oklahoma State the other night. For the Missouri Tigers, Clarence Gilbert gets his second straight start, running in the backcourt with his high school teammate, Keon Dooling. Brian Brower, Albert White, and Monty Harge as Missouri goes with a three-guard lineup. Our Dodge keys to victory, Tony. For Coach Patton's uh, Colorado Buffaloes, they have to maintain the fast break mentality, just like they did in the last game, and they also have to be willing to shoot the three off the break, which I'm sure they will do. 
Missouri, coached by Norm Stewart. Uh, they are going to have to get back on defense. That's the one thing they didn't do well, obviously, against Colorado the last time. And they've got to go inside early to establish the post-up game. 32nd season at Missouri for Norm Stewart. There's Jacque Walls, who had 34 against Oklahoma State in an upset win for Colorado the other night. Keon Dooling has led the Missouri charge that has them now solidly in second place in the conference, but in a four-way tie, even though the Tigers control their own destiny the rest of the way, they'll play road games at Oklahoma State and Texas, and of course, they have to take care of business at home, starting with this game today, if they want to win the Big 12 Conference. Harge controls the tip quickly to Brian Brown. And Missouri has the initial possession. A sellout crowd here at the Hearn Center. One thing that Keon Dooling has done by running the offense coach is that Brian Grower gets a lot more shots than he had before. Keon Dooling is an excellent penetrator, and he'll open up some shots for all the players. The pass inside, knocked away. Walls gets it ahead. Colorado running two on one. Mosley nearly lost it. Now has it blocked by White. And Missouri comes back the other way. Colorado is looking here at man-to-man uh, -man right now defensively. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with the big guy in the low post. And the here he is. Monty Harge working against Mosley. That's too easy. They're playing directly behind him, and they didn't get any help from the perimeter. They can't do that for a majority of this game. Walls runs the show for Colorado, even though he's not a big guy. As Price pops the three in and out. White corrals it for Missouri, loses it, and they get it back with Dooling. He loves the run. Three on two. Dooling to the hole. You have to stop penetration with Dooling. You must make him give it up. If he gets down in the paint like that, he is, he, he's almost unstoppable. I was going to mention a moment ago, Walls, who's just a little guy, is very adept at getting to the free throw line for Colorado. We showed you in the open, he hit 18 of 20 free throws the other night. He nearly lost it here. Clarence Gilbert hounding him, the freshman from Fort Lauderdale. Gilbert is a very physical defensive player. Shot clock winding down. Price has to let it go. It's short, and it's touched last by Colorado. Great defense that time, Coach. Yeah, they, they did a nice job of keeping him on the perimeter. Here's where Harge is very difficult to guard because he's so big. The defensive team has to make a decision on what they're going to do with him down there. Jones guarding Grower. Albert White. They look for White to get off to a quick start. He hasn't been lately. Gilbert lets the free fly. It's no good. Rebound comes away to Colorado. The Buffaloes try to run with Walls. Great pass inside to Mosley. Has White on him. Has it partially blocked. I think Monty Harge may have gotten a hand on it. Here's Dueling at the other end. It's knocked away and belongs to Missouri. But Walls saved an electrifying dunk. Today's Big 12 game brought to you in part by Southwestern Bell, your friendly neighborhood global communications company. Kevin Slayton with Coach Tony Baroni live in Columbia, bringing you the Missouri-Colorado rematch. Coach Patton subbed and put the freshman kid Carter in for Mosley. I, I think he was more upset with uh, the offensive end of the court, where Colorado actually has got three really good shots. And now Albert White moving against him and immediately draws the foul against Carter. That's the first in the game. The officials are not going to allow you to put your hands on the offensive player when he's dribbling the basketball. That's going to be a foul every time. Grower off the inbounds, the baseline jumper, and it's 6 to nothing, Missouri. Good execution on the out-of-bounds play, and Grower really can shoot that shot. And now if you're Colorado in an unfriendly arena, you know you've got to settle down and get a bucket before it gets away from you early. You need to get a go-to play, which they did, and trying to get the post up for Carter. Ball's inside, a great pass. He wasn't ready for it, and the turnover. This is where Monty Harge is a factor. He, he intimidated the post player. 
nice pass from White to Gilbert, who fumbled it out of bounds. White loves to pass the ball, had seven assists a couple of weeks ago. This is a quick inbounds play. There's a screen by Harge. He just got a little bump on the defender, but a little bump by Monty is a big bump. <laughs> There's a lot of him to bump. <laughs> 335 pounds of him, in fact. But we were talking before the game. He's in better shape this year than he's been. He and, really, it, and it shows. He really looks good. Gilbert knocks it away to Grower. They run three on two with Dueling. And he's fouled. I think if, if uh, Brian had it to do over again, he might have held on to the ball just a little bit longer. The bounce pass... The, the bounce pass at the end of the break is tough sometimes. There you see Harge on the rotation, did a wonderful job. And, and Brian might, might have given up a little bit early. He was certainly trying to be unselfish. Dueling misses the first free throw and into the game for Colorado is Will Smith. He replaces Jones, and Mosey's going to come back in as well. Smith should be a factor in this game today, Kevin. He, he has been, he's played three different positions this year, and it probably has hurt his game a little bit because he's not settled in. But he's a very fine offensive player. Dueling with the second free throw, rolls home for him. He has three points, and Missouri's lead is seven to nothing. There's Walls for the three, in and out. There is Gilbert, the freshman. It's not too often you have a freshman back there. Look at the hesitation move, and the reverse from Dooling gets the crowd excited, but it doesn't count. Walls the other way, off the break, and a foul by Dooling at the other end. I don't think that you teach that particular move by Dooling. <laughs> what great instinct. Uh, and, and he was reacting to the defense. He let the defense make a move, and then he took the ball right at the move. Colorado inbounding as they go on the attack. Price off a screen. He can't get it to fall. Monty Harge has it for Missouri. Colorado has had good shots. Uh, it just hasn't fallen for them yet. You see how badly it hasn't fallen. 0 for 6 and they're down 7. Brian Brower for a pull-up three. You can count it. It's 10 to nothing. When, when Brian Brower gets his feet set, squared up to the basket, you can take the shot to the bank. This Missouri crowd now comes to its feet. Colorado inflicted a lot of damage on Missouri with that loss a couple of weeks ago in Boulder. In fact, it's kept Missouri out of first place in the conference. And the foul here is against Dueling, and that's two quick ones on him. 15-11 remaining in the first half. Missouri up 10. We're right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. Have you seen it? The topic of every tree's whisper. The reason the stars twinkle. What every wing caresses. Look for it and you will fail to see it, even as it surrounds you. It's in our first breath, our last, and every breath in between. It is precious, this invisible thing called air, which is why we try in little ways to protect it. It's just something to think about the next time you need fuel. We mill wheat into flour, process and refine oil seeds in Mexico, produce sweeteners from corn in the U.S., Brazil, and Europe. Did you see this? And operate 19 meat processing facilities in North America. Yep. And look what they did with it. Where these days, there's some good news for everyone. Cargill. It's not just what we do. It's how we do it. Hey, grab me some chow. For you, my friend, no sweat. Bang. <laughs> Want personal service? You got it at Sonic. Great food, too, like our famous chicken strip dinner. Served hot and crispy with fries, Texas toast, gravy, and a medium Dr. Pepper, all for a special low price. And this month, try our chocolate-covered cherry sweetheart shake. Pretty sweet service, huh? We'll be home before the commercials are over. Drive in for a change at Sonic. We welcome you back to Columbia. If you'd like to win a trip to the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City, it's easy. Just answer the nation's bank salute to excellence question. And this week's question is this one. 
which Big 12 head coach has been with his current school the longest? If you know the answer, visit the Big 12 website at www.big12sports.com. All correct entries will be entered into a drawing for a trip to see the Big 12 tournament. Nations Bank is the official bank of the Big 12 conference, and I would think they'll have a lot of correct answers on that one. I can even get that one. <laughs> Kevin Slayton with Coach Tony Baroni from Columbia, Missouri, off to a flying start. Ten to nothing as we approach the 15-minute mark. Interesting matchup on defense. Grower has uh, played Price a little bit, and then on the baseline, they're switching everything. Out of the corner is Walls. That's a three. And they're on the board. He has really improved since the beginning of the year, Kevin. I think uh, a junior college player needs time to adjust also, just like freshman. Monty Hart's down low, working on Mosley. Just moves him and scores and draws the foul. He just moved him. Monty has figured out one thing today, and I, I really like it. As a big man, the size that he has, what he wants to do is he wants to find the spot on the court where he can be effective. The defense might try to take it away from him, but he's got to get to that spot. And they're giving him the ball way too close to the basket right now. When Monty leans into you, you know he leaned into you. He misses the free throw, but Grower nearly kept it alive for Missouri, and he did. They say Will Smith touched it last. Are you surprised that Keon Doolin is still in the game with two fouls? I, I am surprised, and I think Norm knows his players pretty well, and he's probably told Keon to be very careful in this situation. A bullet pass to Albert White off the inbound play. They've scored twice off inbounds plays, Coach. Well, Norm Stewart is a veteran who obviously knows how important they are. Those inbounds plays really win games for you. Missouri's lead is 11. That's their largest at 14-3. Wall's trying to go through two players, but Mosley corrals it. Monty just, Monty just stuck a hip out and knocked him to the ground. Monty was sending a message to Walls that time. You're not going to bring the ball in here unless you're going to jump over me somehow. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Or we'd like to see it if it yeah, did happen. It's good that we're here if it happens. Jose Winston in there for Colorado now. A very scrappy defensive player. Walls pulls up for three over Dueling, who got a hand in his face. Smith and White battle for it. Gilbert has the loose ball for Missouri, and here they go. Missouri's energy is really good today. Really good. Brower trying to get it in to Monty Harge. Lost it. But now he battles with Winston. Get him, Pat. Price left alone. That's a defensive mistake. And he nails the three. Uh, both Brower and Gilbert ran to the ball to stop the penetration. And they left Price alone. You're better off letting the ball penetrate than give him that option. 14-6, Missouri leads by eight. John uh, Woods is getting ready to check in for Missouri. Gilbert left alone for three, in and out. And there's Winston for the Buffaloes. And here they come the other way. Long pass for Smith, too far. And his inbound pass intercepted by Doolin. They don't have numbers, but Grower can take it hard, and he pulls it back as well. That was not a good decision by Jose. He, he should have hit the wing, and it would have been a basket for him. Albert White in the lane, a little turnaround, misses everything. Walls for Will Smith, tries to knife between two players and does it. To be effective on the break, you have to fill both lanes. And Colorado is doing a good job of filling the lanes. They just have to connect. They had good shots early. They were down 10-0. They've cut into that Missouri lead now, 14-8. Hards down low, that's too low. Uh-oh, offensive foul. That's two on Monty. I'm not sure that that was a charge, but he's going to get that called against him most of the time. Anytime you dip your shoulder in there, Kevin, it's going to be a problem for him. It was a good play. They did a great job of entering the ball. Missouri leads Colorado 14-8. Kevin Slayton with Coach Tony Baroni from Columbia in that man's home, the Hearn Center. And he's not happy with the call. He's very protective of Monty Harge. Johnny Parker's in there to replace him, though. And also Woods in to replace Dooling. Those two players, each with two fouls. Winston with a nice ball fake. Goes hard and draws a foul against Parker. And that brings Norm Stewart to the 
to his feet. Jose Winston is an outstanding penetrator. When you're guarding him, what you want to do is you really don't want to overreact to his shot fake. You want to make him shoot the ball from the perimeter. If you give him a chance to take it to the hole, he can really create some things. The crowd doesn't like the call. Winston will go to the line, where he's only a 59% free throw shooter. Kevin, he's got to get better at this because if you want your point guard handling the ball down near the end of the game, you have to know that he's going to knock his free throws home. And 59% won't give you confidence if you're a coach. Parker grabs the rebound after both misses. So Colorado could have cut it to four, but they missed the opportunity. Albert White figures to go to work down low with Harge out of there. Over Mosley, in and out. Winston has the rebound. Here go the Buffaloes. They don't have the right combination of numbers, and they pull it back. Mosley, an 18-footer, drops it. He has his first basket of the game, and it's a four-point game. And I like Colorado's bounce from the beginning, uh, and they're really getting the ball up the court and forcing Missouri to get back on defense. And one of the things that's happened now is that do with dueling out of the game, they've had to play Grower more at the point guard. And that does a couple of things, not the least of which takes really the ball away from Grower as a shooter. White for a three, and he hits it. He can hurt you inside and outside. He's a wonderful player, Kevin. If he stays focused, he, he's got a chance to go to the next level. Colorado down seven. A pull up from Price is short. White has the rebound there. One thing people don't realize about White is he's a very good passer. He is an outstanding passer. He throws really crisp passes also. And he enjoys that part of the game. A lot of big scores don't. Another three from White. That one doesn't go. He liked that three the last <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he gets bored a little bit running too much offense and lets that thing fly. Price with a miss. Grower has the rebound. Grower with four rebounds a game. The second on Missouri's uh, team. He gets to every loose rebound, uh, which you love your guards to be able to do. John Woods working at the offensive end. White with a nice spin to get inside, draws the foul. It's offensive, though. That's the second offensive foul call against Missouri, the first foul of the game on White. You, and we've got a timeout on the floor. You have an opportunity when you spin, the defense can come over and pick up the charge. Colorado trailing by seven after opening up down 10 to nothing. We'll come back to Columbia for more after this. It introduced the most powerful overall line of pickups on the planet and stamped the terms V10 and Magnum Power indelibly on the face of truckdom. It kicked open the door to the next generation of pickups and made such an impression that today, this is all you have to see to know what's behind it. You mean Eric's mom. She drove yesterday. Your cold got caught in the door. Well, my mom's on Thursday. It is Thursday. Wednesday. Thursday. Are we open Monday? It's Thursday. You had tuna for lunch. Plans getting confused? Use three-way calling from Southwestern Bell. When you're on with one person, just click over, dial another number. When they answer, click back. It's already on your phone and just 75 cents per use. Well, look who's mom's going Yeah, her. all of them. Well, this just throws off the whole schedule. Three-way calling from Southwestern Bell. The first front-wheel drive minivan in America. The first to offer dual sliding doors. The first with roll-out seats. A minivan that since introduction has offered more innovations than any other. The new Dodge has a passion for bringing the future into the present and then making it affordable with a $1,000 cash allowance or 1.9 financing on Dodge Caravans. The future is waiting. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you for this limited time offer. Back in Columbia.
Columbia, where Philip 66 is proud to be the title sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Be sure to stop by your local Philip 66 station. Fill up with high quality, super clean gasoline only from Philip 66, the performance company. Kevin Slayton and Coach Tony Baroni in Columbia's Norm Stewart. Kim Anderson, his longtime assistant, look on. The Tigers lead the Buffaloes 17 to 10 with 10-18 remaining in the first half. Yeah, I, I think Norm is, is concerned about a couple of things here. One, uh, Colorado is getting, they're getting good shots, and they are able to push the ball up the court against Missouri. Missouri hitting the boards well, out-rebounding Colorado by a 2-1 to margin so far. He joined us late, Keon Dooling, Monty Harge on the Missouri bench with two fouls apiece. Mosley working inside now without Harge there. Parker did a good job. Aki Thomas gets bumped, misses the shot. Mosley for the second attempt scores, and he's fouled. What, what happens when you have Monty out of the lineup, there's a lot more space down there for the uh, Colorado Buffaloes, and Ricardo came out with a go-to play down low. He had his big guys posted up. That was a tough shot right there, and a really, really good offensive rebound. The free throw falls for Mosley. Johnny Parker picked up his second foul. Missouri has three players with two fouls. Jeff Hafer gets a nice hand as he comes in to replace Parker. He had missed a couple of, well, three games, actually, with a deep thigh bruise, which you see on his left leg is wrapped still tightly. He caught it the, near the end of the Baylor game, and I'll tell you, you know how those thigh bruises feel. Especially if they're deep, uh, there's really not a lot you can do about it. Colorado coming out with some downcourt pressure here uh, in terms of dueling out of the lineup. They feel they can get pick up a little bit higher as opposed to letting him penetrate. They're four down after opening up down 10 nothing. Woods nails a three-pointer, though. He can be a key for them down the stretch because he is an excellent shooter. Missouri hit their first six threes at Iowa State the other night in the ball game and route to a big win. Mosley working inside. Albert White takes it away. Great pass to Woods off the baseline. And it comes out. Hafer follows. He can't hit it. Woods again gets the roll. Offensive rebounding is something that it takes simply effort. You keep going and keep going and good things will happen for you. Missouri lead now, nine. Oh, a great backdoor cut. Hafer blocks Thomas. Here comes Gilbert the other way for White, but he throws it away. You, you have to be careful at the end of the break not to throw bounce passes. Uh, it looked like it uh, knocked off of one of the Colorado players. And Missouri will inbound it with Brian Grower, the trigger man. Brian Grower, a coach's son, Rich Grower, his father. From the corner, that's a three. Looked good from there, but it bounces out, and here come the Buffaloes. Price is fouled by Grower, who thought he had a steal. Again, Missouri executes their out-of-bounds play, and uh, Bryant had a great shot. Uh, Norm would take that any time. Colorado's got to tighten up defensively on the out-of-bounds situation. Missouri's eighth foul of the first half to Colorado's three, and Colorado's shooting free throw. With the foul on that particular case is that he reached with the wrong hand. If, if the ball is away from you, you want to come with the closest hand to the ball. And in this case, he came across his body, and that's why he committed the foul. Kenny Price had 22 against Missouri in the Buffalo's win in Boulder. He has five here thus far. And the lead is seven for Missouri, 8.45 left. Woods left alone, and it's blocked, but Hafer jams it home! Hafer, Hafer kept playing. He did not stop playing. A lot of times they forget that just because it's a layup, it doesn't mean it's going in. Jones pulls up for Colorado at the other end and gets his first bucket of the game. Yeah, what do coaches tell kids? Follow the, follow the shot, even though it's a layup? Finish every play. That's what you have to do. John Woods feeling it. It's knocked off the ball. No foul. And Walls comes away for Colorado. He's going to the bucket, and, a, and he's called for turning the ball over. That, that was a very fine call. One of the emphasis this year is on carrying the basketball. And when you get an advantage by cupping it, is, which is what he did, uh, 
when you cup the basketball, it puts the defense in a, a tremendously tough situation. So here, there's the cup right there. It was real obvious. Norm Stewart up pointing at the scoreboard for the team foul totals. When you're playing at home, you don't expect to have eight called against you and three against the visitors. Norm doesn't expect eight against him on the road, so. <laughs> Did you enjoy coaching against Norm Stewart? He was great. He really was. He's a total professional. And the foul comes against Colorado. I like Missouri's movement on offense. Sometimes they tend to stand around a little bit, but this group here specifically, and it, it happened when Hafer came to the game, their movement has been much better than it, than it had been. Seventh all-time in victories, Norm Stewart. 728 wins in 38 years. He's the third winningest active coach. Well, it's amazing that he's withstood this test of time. It really is. John Woods off the bench to give Missouri some offense. Seven points off the bench. He hadn't been in there that long. It hasn't played much the last couple of games, so it's a big lift for him. He now has eight. Jeff Hafer got this crowd excited, and we'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. Shoot for the loot this college basketball season at your neighborhood Phillips 66 station. It's your chance to win the grand prize package of five years of free Phillips 66 gasoline, a trip to Las Vegas, and two free tickets to the Phillips 66 Big 12 basketball tournament, where one shot could win you up to $100,000 in cash, plus thousands of other prizes from Phillips 66 and Pepsi. Enter at participating Phillips 66 locations and shoot for the loot today. How do you measure opportunity? Is it one size fits all? Does it only come in small, medium, and large? At Nations Bank, we believe the true measure of opportunity is not the size of your business, but the size of your ideas. Maybe that's why we lend more money to small businesses than any bank in America. We share your point of view, and what we see is not a small business. It's a huge opportunity. Let's make the most of it. Work piling up. Let's go. That's the perfect time to declare a national holiday. Let's go. National Car Rentals declaring every day a national holiday. Let's go. With a great holiday rates, you can escape to the slopes. Let's go. Or the golf greens. Let's or go. the tropical beaches. Let's go. So call National Car Rental now. Let's go. And declare your own national holiday. Let's what are you go. waiting for? Let's go. A Studio 66 update from the Big East. UConn with a scare against Seton Hall. Close game. Check this out. The slip. There's the loose ball. Ricky Moore picks it up for the Huskies. Wow, they're breathing easier as they beat the Pirates 53-48. Duke has just gotten started against Wake Forest, and many people forgot. Tony Baroni was the point guard at Duke not too many years ago. Right, Coach? Uh, a long time ago, Doug, and I don't know that they want to claim that either. <laughs> That was back when, it, when you could get entrance to Duke and you didn't have to be all that smart, was it? <laughs> they were still jumping the bat, jump ball for the baskets at that time. <laughs> Missouri leads this game 26-17. And you see what Woods has done off the Missouri bench as Kenny Price nails one for Colorado. You have to love Jackway Walls. He saw the trap, found Price in the corner. That's a great play. Missouri's lead is seven. There's Woods for three. That doesn't go. And the rebound of Mosley. Woods coming off the bench as a shooter, he is going to shoot the ball. And that may not always be the best shots, but he is a scorer. Seven points in five minutes, but there's Price nails in three. So Price is up to his old tricks. Ten points for him. You, you cannot go underneath the screen. When you get screened, you've got to go over the top or he's going to hurt you all day. Seems pretty equal from three-point range right now. Under seven minutes left. Albert White goes to work. Won't fall for him. Hafer keeps it alive. White following. Nope, there's Hafer. Nope. Tipped out, and Price has it for the Buffalo. What a factor Hafer's been. He's been outstanding. Keeping balls alive on the offensive glass. Jones cutting to the lane. The coaches like cutters, don't they? Cutters create space. And when you have space on the basketball court, you're going to get better angles to pass the ball to your guys. I really like Walls. He, he has made some really simple-looking passes that have been very, very difficult. 
John Woods whistled for that foul, his first. Missouri in foul trouble. They have Keon Dooling and Monty Harge and Johnny Parker all on the bench with two fouls apiece. Walls hits the first free throw. With Harge on the bench, it creates uh, some opportunities for Jack Way to take the ball into the paint a little bit. When the big guy's in there, you just have to be worried about going down there with the basketball, but without him there, it gives you a chance to penetrate more. Pat Schumacher comes in to replace Albert White. The Quay Walls, who was 18 of 20 from the free throw line in their win over Oklahoma State the other night, now has five points. And they're as close as they've been, a two-point game after Missouri led 10 to nothing. Colorado showing a little half-court, a three-quarter court trapped after made free throw. Just not, a, I'm sorry. I was going to say, Coach, they're not a veteran team, Colorado. They're a young team, but they didn't wilt when they got behind 10 to nothing. You know, and part of that, Kevin, has to do with how well they played at home against them. That's Woods off the baseline again. Nine for Woods. Quay Walls likes that matchup, and then he gets it down low to Mosley. That's easy. Oh, travel. And that gets Ricardo Patton's attention. That travel was created because Schumacher didn't catch the ball with two hands. He, he caught it with one, and then he had to try to struggle to get his feet. Missouri has the ball, a four-point lead. There's Schumacher down low for Missouri. Working against Mosley, a little turnaround or misses. And it's touched last by Schumacher. That was a, a big-time move by Schumacher in terms of running the jump hook. At the other end of the court, uh, the, the, the walk was on Mosley. Colorado trailing by four, five and a half minutes remaining in this half. Keon Dooling and Monty Harge started this game for Missouri. Both are on the bench with two fouls, as is Johnny Parker. Great spin by Wall. And he drops it home. That's one of his favorite moves. And what you have to do is you don't have to, you do not want to over rotate on that spin move. He has seven points for the Buffaloes. He started out ice cold, but have battled back to within two. Schumacher inside, leaves it for Woods off the baseline. Woods can't get it. Hafer not there for the rebound. Smith clears it to Walls for the Buffalo. with a chance to tie this game. What a comeback that would be. That's who they want. Price looking for the pick. Pulls up three, and it's short. Clarence Gilbert ahead to Woods. He won't hesitate. Nearly got himself trapped. Grower with a nice move to the hole. Doesn't fall. When you're as good a shooter as Brian Grower, would you want him to pull up and shoot that, Coach? Yeah, absolutely. Mosley with the travel at the other end. Walls here really does a great job on this pick and then the spin. And you saw Grower overreact to going to his left and then let an open lane to the paint. McCoy had 34, a career high the other night. Off to a pretty good start today with seven. Remember, he had 25 of those 34 in the second half. Albert White loses control of it. Carter ahead to Walls. They go two on two. Walls waits for Winston. Nice spin again. Scores again. Now, that's interesting, Kevin, because the last time he did it, he spun the other way. <laughs> and that's pretty tough to be able to guard that move. Nine points. That's your Walls. 13 to four run for Colorado and a whistle. And a foul underneath is going to go against Walls. That's one of Missouri's favorite plays. They run a cutter off the baseline, and then the man who set the screen comes right back to the ball in a post-up move. White and Hards are very good at that. Hards is getting ready to come back in as Albert White is at the line. He'll shoot a pair. This is the first. Albert White has been inconsistent from the line, 67% for the year. Down into the tournament and these late games, uh, it's inevitable that free throws will be make, will, will make the difference in games. It, it never fails. And Missouri is at the bottom of the barrel in the conference in free throws. Good offensive board, but Woods has it taken away. Grower gets it back. 
and he has a lane to the basket but leaves it for Woods to score. Great hands by both teams that time. Uh, Brower excellent in terms of finding the open man. 11 points for John Woods off the Missouri bench. And a hold called against Brian Grower. Missouri is switching anything on the perimeter. And what happened that time was that Brian got caught in a mismatch with Smith. And it, Winston got his hands on it, but what he forgot to do was maintain control. And then Brower came right up with the ball and made the assist. What do you do now if you're Norm Stewart? You've got Keon Dooling on the bench with two fouls. Now Brian Brower has two. Monty Hartz has a pair, and he's coming back into the game. He'll replace Albert White. I think you go with the veteran Brower. Uh, he, he, he won't pick up a foul that an inexperienced freshman might pick up. In addition to the fact that Dooling is such a high flyer, uh, charges are always problems at that time. A pair of missed free throws. Carter gets the rebound and Hards fouls him. That's how quickly Monty Hards got his third. I'll tell you, you better not bump anybody today because they're, they're blowing the whistle. Well, and, and the two things happened here. You have to check off on free throws. Missouri didn't do that. And Monty went after the ball. And that's a tough, tough call, whether it's his first foul or his third foul. Carter, the freshman, goes to the line for Colorado. The Buffalo is hurting themselves here at the line. They've missed seven free throws in this half right now. Missouri has committed 11 team fouls to Colorado's five. Two-point lead for Missouri, despite that foul trouble. Jeff Hafer into the game, Schumacher in there. A nice pass for Woods, went through his hands, but Hafer fortunate to get it back. Now Schumacher with a give and go to Hafer, and he scores with a left hand. Hafer has come into the game and cut to the basket, and he's received three passes for that. Winston on the perimeter, there's Aki Thomas. Back into the game for Colorado. Gilbert takes it from him. He'll go coast to coast and misses. And a foul against Grower, and that's his third. Well, what happened here was Gilbert made a decision to go to his left hand. Not a good idea. And, and sometimes fouls occur out of hustle. And uh, Brian happened to be in the wrong place that time, and he picked the foul. Up. Keon Dooling will come back in from Missouri. Well, they're accumulating major foul trouble. It's imperative for Dooley now to come out of this half with less than three fouls. He has to keep himself away from the third foul, even if it means up giving, giving up a basket. And as you're saying, the charge with him is always possible. Absolutely. Well, you know, he probably fouled him. Uh, tough call. He probably fouled him, but Brower was going after the rebound. Coach Daly over on the bench is telling him, hey, you knew you had two. You shouldn't pick that one up. Yeah. And it all starts from a missed layup. 12 points now for Price. Missouri's lead is cut to two. The crowd's unhappy. We're coming back to Columbia for more after this. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 19. Don, our battery expert. You never know when your battery's going to die. But when it does, Don is here to help. Just let Don know what kind of car you drive, and he'll make sure you get the right battery. Better yet, get your car in here, and Don will install an Autocraft battery for you. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. introduced the most powerful overall line of pickups on the planet and stamped the terms V10 and Magnum Power indelibly on the face of truckdom. It kicked open the door to the next generation of pickups and made such an impression that today this is all you have to see to know what's behind it. 
No matter how many times they try to run, one way or another, the chase must end. He didn't know what hit him. On an all-new Cops. Then, he raped her and almost killed her. See how she saved herself going 60 miles per hour. Help America's Most Wanted. It all starts tonight at 7 on Fox 4. Fox 4 News shows you a program where some Kansas City men are learning to be better dads. Is it working? Find out tonight on Fox 4 News at 9. Back in Columbia, Missouri, as you look at the new Big 12 commissioner, Kevin Weimer, making his first trip to Columbia. Tigers holding on. 32-30 with 2.44 left. Coming up at halftime, the National Car Rental Halftime Report. You can expect to see Doug Bell, who will have highlights from the studio, the Texas A&M Oklahoma game, and from the Duke Blue Devils, who play Wake Forest today. Duke ranked number one in the country. Missouri in some serious foul trouble, as we talked about earlier. Uh, you, you can see Hards and Grower with the three, dueling with two, obviously. In, in, in this particular instance now, Colorado can really make some hay if they play, just play good, solid defense here. Missouri started the game 10 to nothing. It was 32-30 now. And foul trouble has been the big thing. And realistically, Colorado should have the lead. They've lost, they've missed so many free throws. Dueling probably would have gone to the basket had he not had two fouls. Schumacher with the jump hook doesn't fall. And Will Smith clears it for the buffs. Here's Jones quickly. Nice give and go to Mosley. He's hammered underneath. No, oh, the call to travel. The uh, Colorado players are trying to slice through that next line of defense. And, and that's what happened in terms of the, the call by the official. It was a wonderful pass. Good play. Uh, he got fouled. He didn't walk at all on that play. That was foul. And I'll do some officiating now, Kevin. That's, <laughs> that's what we want to see. <laughs> Into the game from Missouri, Albert White back in. He replaces Schumacher. And Albert White here has to take over offensively for Missouri. Hafer with a nice first step, and he hits the jumper. He has six off the bench, playing with that thigh bruise. They've had two great sparks from Woods and uh, Hafer off the bench. Now, this is where dueling has got to be careful. If Colorado starts running him into some picks, they can have a problem. Hafer with a steal. He'll go for the jam. Left-handed! Uh, Jack Quay Walls got a little careless with the basketball that time. The lead is six. The crowd's on its feet. And now Jaquay throws it away. Th those kinds of passes uh, many times fool the receiver because it's almost like a changeup in baseball. And uh, the receiver was jumping before the pass was even thrown. Under a minute left. And a whistle and a foul on Jeff Hafer, was it? Yeah, and, and that was a good call. That was a good call. What you'll see here is Hafer has great hands. Nice job of reaching in. And what I liked about his move here is he took the ball right to the basket to dunk it. There was no prettiness at the end of it. Just go up and slam it. Great enthusiasm. And you know, Kevin, one of the things about Hafer is that he is a he has great enthusiasm and what happens with when you do have that, it infects the rest of the team in a positive way. And the crowd as well. Walls goes to the line. He has nine points. He's two for two from the free throw line. It's contagious. Good free throw shooting and poor free throw shooting. And it's just something that you can't uh, automatically say, go in there and make your free throws. A lot of this is psychological with the kids when they're missing. They've missed seven free throws, Colorado has, in this first half. He hits the second one, he has 10. And the Missouri lead is five with 53 seconds remaining in the first half. Missouri asks for a 20-second timeout. Well, if you're Missouri and you get to the locker room with the lead with all the foul trouble they've had, they feel pretty good. If you're Colorado, you started out down 10-0, you gotta feel pretty good too. Uh, Colorado was not playing poorly, they just couldn't knock the shot down early. Uh, Norm might consider now taking Dooling out of the game 
and going with another uh, sub for him so that he doesn't pick up his third. I used to do that, and uh, instead of taking advantage of that, uh, the other team ran off four or five <laughs> baskets against us, so it wasn't a great move. But you just don't want to get him his third foul. Brian Grower already has his third, so you'd have to look way down the bench to find someone else. Gilbert's already in the game. You might have to go with a bigger guy and move Gilbert out to the point. Colorado's going zone in this particular instance. Woods from the corner can't hit the three, and Colorado will have the possession. Down five. Walls is not in the ball game, so they're not going to go to him. Neither is Price. And they try to go inside, and Albert Wright has it. Knocked down, loses the ball. Colorado now. There's Price. I said he was out of the game, but he was in, actually, and that's a two. You just have to know where he is all the time. He can hide well. Colorado is in this 3-2 uh, matchup type zone. The open area is going to be the corner on good ball reversal. Woods forces one and misses, and here comes Colorado, but that ends the first half. A three-point Missouri lead. Kenny Price with a big half for Colorado, had 14. And he led them, as he did last time, against Missouri when he had 22. The lead is three. We'll have the second half from Columbia, but right now we're going to go to the studio with Doug Bell. Kevin, thank you. You hear the crowd there at Missouri giving the guys in the striped shirts uh, an earful, especially with a couple of their players with three fouls, although Missouri does lead in the first half. All right, time to get everybody updated on what's going on on the other half of the Big 12 Network as we welcome everyone to the National Cardinal Halftime Report. It's Texas A&M against Oklahoma. Not much of a game. Oklahoma blowing it open. Michael Johnson off and running. Here's the break to Ryan Humphrey, who slams it down with authority. And the Sooners, who've moved into the front seat of that car, as Kelvin Sampson has told us on the pregame show, up by 20, 44-24. Much more coming up on Studio 66 right after this. Today's game is brought to you by Nations Bank and Sonic, America's Drive-In, where we invite you to drive in for a change. Fortune 500 companies know that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. National Car Rental. Because at most major airports in America, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental. Plans getting confused? Use three-way calling from Southwestern Bell. When you're on with one person, just click over, dial another number. When they answer, click back. It's already on your phone in just 75 cents per use. Well, look who's mom for Yeah, all of them. Well, this just throws off the whole schedule. Three-way calling from Southwestern Bell. Advance Auto Parts presents part number six, Ed, from purchasing. At an early age, Ed gained an appreciation for low prices. Yes, Edward. If you buy a whole lot of stuff... You can sell it for a whole lot less. Good, Edward. Good. High volume buying is how Ed keeps prices low for you. No, no, no. That's zillion with a Z, not trillion with a T. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Remember life in the fast lane? I do. First you meet, then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sports Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. And now, Regal comes with something that'll make it even easier to drive. Regal by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. Say, Mr. Bill, let's go for a ride in the Lexus GS 400. Gee, it's nice in here. Hey, let's let our friend Sluggo drive. Oh. To me. Don't forget to buckle up. <laughs> Sluggo likes this big V8. Hey, but, no, no, wait, no, no, wait, no, it's too fast. Whoa, no, no. zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. Flat. Hey, Sluggo says he could drive all day. 
the Lexus GS400, a flat-out value at Superior Lexus. Welcome to the National Car Rental Halftime. We're brought to you by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Close game in Columbia. The Tigers on top of the Buffs, 36-33. A very important game for Missouri, to say the least. Welcome to Studio 66. Let's get everybody caught up on what's going on elsewhere around the country. Duke got off to a rocky start against Wake Forest. As you can see, the backboard got busted. Delayed the game for about a half hour. But once they got it going, they got it going as usual. William Avery with a three. Shane Battier, the Corey Maggetti. Oh, man, it's... Pretty fast break. Duke has it going. The fans love it. 31-15. Wake Forest better take cover. They're on the verge of getting blown out. UConn, number two at Seton Hall. Close game for Jim Calhoun's bunch. The shot, the miss. Remus Karkinas, the follow, and the lay-in for the Pirates. UConn coming back. Uh-oh. Ricky Moore comes up with a loose ball. The game was tied at the time. You saw four minutes to go. That kind of busted it open. UConn wins a close one, 53-48. Now 22-1 on this season. The Auburn Tigers on top of Alabama, 20-8. to eight. Last year at home, they beat them by 54 points. I wonder if it'll get that bad today. Pretty bad early on, 20-8. to eight. Purdue, Illinois, Boilermakers trying to get above water. They beat Indiana to go to 500 in the league. And then Jared Cornell with a shot. Corey Bradford kept the Illini in there. This game went down to the final minutes. But Cornell, season high, 30 points for the Boilermakers, who now have finally gotten their head above water. They are 6-5 in the league. Indiana Northwestern just getting started. A huge game for Northwestern as they try to make their first ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. UMass, Rhode Island, A-10 affair. Rhode Island feels they still have a shot. Inside it goes to Larry Kettner for the slam. Back comes Rhode Island, Luther Clay, the dunk. Nice passing inside UMass. Trying to stop the big guy. Oh, you can't stop Odom. Lamar Odom with a tip. The follow, Rhode Island 59-56. Big win for them as they remain a bubble team for the NCAA. Virginia Tech on top of Fordham, 21-16. From the MAC, it's Ohio at home against Western Michigan. No problem, 74-55 Ohio. Their best year in a long time since Danny Nee was their coach. Ball State over Central Michigan, 62-49. Akron over Kent, 38-48. 28. You see both teams with four losses in the conference. America East, Boston U on top of Hofstra, 48-44. That would be a big time upset. Drexel over Northeastern, 73-66. More scores for you from Studio 66. Butler, Detroit battle for first place in their conference. And App State over VMI, 83-65. Memphis DePaul Conference USA. Pat Kennedy watching. Kerry Hartfield from way outside. The bomb, here comes DePaul, slamming it down. Willie Coleman has been a man on a mission underneath the hoop. He's the guy who hit the free throw against Cincinnati that won the game. DePaul now headed for eight wins in the conference. That would be the most they've ever had in Conference USA. Missouri on top of the half. We'll be back right after this. What exactly is opportunity? Is it big or small? At Nations Bank, we believe every business decision you make holds opportunity. And like you, we have a knack for finding it. Whether it's maximizing cash flow or taking your company public. Maybe that's why we're the bank for so many leading companies around the country. And why we lend more money to business than any bank in America. Opportunity is out there. Let's make the most of it. that you're going to see that you can't unsee.
to solve an unthinkable crime. Tell me this atrocity is false. Detective Tom Wells. Tom, where are you? Must risk everything he loves. Get out of the house now! Please, Amy, just do it! And everything he believes. No! Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage. You know we love to finish this, but man. 8mm, rated R. Opens everywhere February 26th. Welcome to the National Car Rental Halftime Report, brought to you by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Classroom Champion is brought to you by Phillips 66. When it comes to convenience and value, it's at the top of the class. And honors go to Andy Markowski of Nebraska, who has a 339 in education. And Markowski's Cornhuskers did something they hadn't done in 15 years. Win at Kansas. They did by coming from 11 points down. And that's the subject of today's Southwestern Bell Conference Call. The Cornhuskers battled back throughout the second half and showed the medal it takes to win the Big 12 Conference. Their coach knows it's wins like this that will get you the title. We felt the championship goes through Lawrence. You have to be, and then it goes through Columbia, Missouri, the team to the north. And we're just going to take it one at a time. We lost to a team, Iowa State, last Saturday night. They kicked us bad. And the rematch is at Nebraska tonight on ESPN. While Kansas will try to get it back on track as the second part of our doubleheader at Texas Tech. Now it's time for the Cargill. Where are they now? Brought to you by Cargill. Today, it's Kansas's Dean Smith who played on Fog Allen's 52 National Championship team. Of course, Dean Smith went on to win the most games in Division I college basketball history at North Carolina. He's now happily retired at Chapel Hill. We'll have more hoops coming up after this. Vacation travelers know that when it Let's comes go. to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. go. National Car Rental. Especially if you're going to Disneyland's new Tomorrowland. Because as the official car rental company of the Magic Kingdom, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. For a family vacation you'll never forget. So what are you waiting for? Let's go to Disneyland's new Tomorrowland with National Car Rental. Let's go! Advance Auto Parts presents part number 19. Don, our battery expert. You never know when your battery's going to die. But when it does, Don is here to help. Just let Don know what kind of car you drive, and he'll make sure you get the right battery. Better yet, get your car in here, and Don will install an Autocraft battery for you. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. And now, Queen Victoria and Cleopatra talk fashion. Oh! thinking of getting a tattoo, perhaps a rose or a fleur-de-lis. Hmm, I don't know, Doc. And thanks to three-way calling, they consult. Catherine the Great. Kate, honey, what do you think? Vicky with a tattoo? I say you proceed, woman. I believe that you go, girl. <laughs> three-way calling, it's already on your phone. It's just 75 cents per use, and it's a great way for great minds to get together. <laughs> We lived with my parents for six months before we found our first house. Finding the home insurance was easier. Shelter insurance has been part of our family for years, and Dad said their claim service is the best. We found a house. Oh, Karen. I just hope this move isn't premature. Shelter insurance. We'll always be there for you. We're back in Columbia at the Hearn Center at halftime. Missouri leading Colorado 36-33 after spurting to a 10-0 start. Kevin Slate and Coach Tony Baroni with you. Coach, an interesting first half. Both teams uh, had their runs, but uh, as we take a look at the shelter insurance first half highlights, uh, Missouri ends up with the lead at the end of the half. Woods came off the bench and did a great job for Missouri. Uh, here he gets an open three. Colorado's got to find him because he can absolutely shoot the basketball and he had a wonderful first half for Missouri. Uh, Colorado, Jockway Walls was outstanding. I, I really love his control and his patience at the end of the break. Here he exhibits the control by using the spin move to take the ball to the basket. A key in this game in the first half for Missouri has been the kid Hafer, who has come off the bench after being hurt. Great steal here. And, and now he takes the ball to the basket, he gets the dunk, and even more importantly, as far as I'm concerned, his enthusiasm ignites the crowd. 
For your life, home, car, farm, or business, Shelter Insurance will always be there for you. The second half of this Big 12 battle from Columbia, Missouri is coming your way in just a few moments. From the very beginning, he was so committed. He stuck with it. He never lost sight of his goal. The hard work and determination paid off. Phillips 66 is proud to be title sponsor of Big 12 basketball. We know performance starts with commitment. Do rich people have more friends than the rest of us? Are they more deserving of a comfortable seat? Are they more entitled to break safely on a rainy day? Are we the only car company that doesn't think so? Century by Buick. Full of amenities for under 20000 And right now, Century is an even better value. Come in today and get $750 cash back on every new 99. Century by Buick. A luxury car for everyone. How do you measure opportunity? Is it one size fits all? Does it only come in small, medium, and large? At Nations Bank, we believe the true measure of opportunity is not the size of your business, but the size of your ideas. Maybe that's why we lend more money to small businesses than any bank in America. We share your point of view, and what we see is not a small business. It's a huge opportunity. Let's make the most of it. We process salt in California and the Caribbean. I'm on my way. Extract food and feed ingredients from Iowa corn and soybeans. Supply orange juice to New York, Moscow, and Tokyo. And market farm commodities from elevators across North America, where the flow of grain is, at times, briefly interrupted. Oh, my gosh. Happy birthday, Jim. Cargill. It's not just what we do. It's how we do it. by Philip 66, makers of super clean gasolines and Trop Arctic motor oil. We're back in Columbia. Here's our Buick first half stats. And Colorado rebounded after a very cold start, Coach. They really did. And I think what we zero in here is the free throw shooting uh, from both teams, actually. But from Colorado's standpoint, they'll have to pick that up. Kenny Price had a big first half. For Colorado, 14 points, and Missouri had trouble finding him at times. Uh, Missouri got 19 points off of their bench. Uh, Hafer and Woods, I, I believe, were the two keys in that. They sure were. Brian Grauer, of course, with five, and Albert White with five. They need White to get going. Jaquay Walls had a good first half, coming off of a 34-point night the other evening against Oklahoma State. Missouri by three. Let's see how this first couple of minutes is called, Kevin, here. Uh, it'll be key in terms of the foul trouble that the teams are in. Missouri in foul trouble, and Colorado trying to go up high against White with Renfro. Changes hands and hits it. The last time we looked at Renfro, we were not sure whether he was right or left-handed. <laughs> we're still not he, sure. I still don't know. <laughs> He'll use either hand. That's his first basket of the game. And Missouri has Monty Hard playing with three fouls, dueling with two. Monty with a nice turnaround. Hafer with the tip. Oh, it wouldn't go for him. And Colorado has it. The Buffaloes with a chance to take their first lead of the game. They have been tied. They battled back to tie it at 28. After starting out down 10 to nothing. And as officials, Coach, do they talk in the locker room at halftime? Absolutely. And uh, they'll review some of the plays that they thought might not have been good plays. That was a great play by Albert White coming out on, on twice. That's about the fourth time we've seen that today. You have to get hold of the ball before you dribble it. Price alertly driving on Dueling. Now Jones from outside, but Dueling skies to get the rebound. And he's fouled by Price. And the crowd gives a roar because it didn't go Missouri's way in the first half. I, I, I sensed a little bit of nervousness by Dooling here in terms of his rebound. He, he didn't explode away from the, the play right there. He was more holding on to the ball. Dooling sat most of the first half with two fouls. 
Hafer, who came off the bench. Monty Harge inside, doesn't go. Monty loses the follow. Good effort by the big guy. Just be smart here at the end. Now we've got a whistle. Let's wait and see who it's called against. Walls really does a good job of pushing the ball up. I, I would like to see him throw crisper passes. He, he likes to throw that home run lob at the end of the break. And Colorado has good athletes. But I would like to see him make a little crisper pass at the end of the break. Hafer gets whistled for his second foul. And Mosley hits the free throw. Well, that's why Ricardo called you into the locker room, Kevin, because he wanted someone to tell his guys how to shoot the free throw. <laughs> Mosley has tied the game, and Colorado with a chance for their first lead, and they have it. You'll go on a retainer basis. That's right. 37-36, <laughs> uh, Colorado. Down court pressure. It's a 3-2 trap that they're using. And this is where Dooling's got to be careful. He doesn't want to play tentatively, but he wants to play smart. Missouri needs this guy to score, Albert White. Had just five in the first half. He sometimes has been known to explode in spurts. That one doesn't go, but Monty Harge with the follow, he missed it! But he got away with it because Colorado touched it last. Don't get mad at Marty here. Uh, I think a lot of people are saying, well, why didn't he make the shot? He should have dumped the ball is what he should have done, but it was a good effort. A good offensive rebound. Missouri had eight of those in the first half. Gilbert left alone for three! Bounds plays again. At the other end, Colorado can't score for the foul, and if that's Monty Hards, that's four. He's got to give that basket up. I know it's tough for a player who's hustling and wants to win the game and plays hard. It's just he can't make this foul. It's going to hurt his team more. He had no chance of blocking the shot. He had a better chance of throwing a guy up about eight rows than he did to block it. I'll tell you this, Renfro to the line knows he's been hit. He can shoot the free throws right hand. Yeah, I think that uh, when, when Hodge, Hodge goes out now, you're going to see an advantage swing a little bit in Colorado's direction. Now, Renfro shot that right hand, did he not? Yes, he did. Every basket we've seen him make in the paint has been left-handed. So maybe, that's what it is. Maybe you ought to shoot this left-handed. <laughs> He missed them both. Yeah. Johnny Parker, who came in for Monty Hart, has the rebound. They need an outstanding effort from Johnny Parker. He was a very highly recruited young man. Hasn't found his niche yet. Or maybe this is a game that'll work for him. And Albert White, trying to take over, leaves it for Hafer. Missouri's lead is two. Dueling played just 10 minutes in the first half. Hafer with a nice drive. The spin doesn't go, but Albert White, I think, is who tipped it in. Excellent offensive rebound to the glass. Really a good tip and a good move to the basket. White working down low against Renfro, trying to back his way in. The left-handed shot misses everything. And here comes Dueling from Missouri. Parker tries to explode. Dueling for three. That doesn't fall. Parker keeps it alive, but Jones has it, gives it to Albert White. Didn't see him coming. Gilbert left alone for three, hits it again. Two in a row for him. The, uh, the problem with that play was that the Colorado player who rebounded at Jones never saw the defense coming. Missouri spurts to a seven-point lead after falling behind for the first time, largely due to Clarence Gilbert. The penetration by Hayford creates the offensive rebound. That's a great tip. He was underneath the basket. He, the, the defensive player, Albert White, came from behind, and Jones never saw him. I love Gilbert. I, I think he's got great potential. He can really shoot the corner and the angle jump shot. Interesting, there was an article, as you look at that run by Missouri in the uh, St. Louis paper about Gilbert today, who's, he said, I've just done what the coach tells me to do and try to play as hard as I can. And he's been rewarded with a starting spot the last two games. Find me 10 of those guys, <laughs> and you win a championship. That's right. Ricardo is not happy right now. These guys have taken three really bad shots in a row. Price 
can't hit it. Jones, a nice job to keep it alive. And now gets it down low. It won't fall. Everybody goes for it. And the foul on Colorado. And Ricardo Patton's livid. Uh, Ricardo's concerned about the, the shooter. They ran a wonderful play for Price, and he, he was open, and he felt that he was undercut at the end of the shot. Will Smith is whistled for the foul. Token pressure from the Buffaloes. They now trail by seven. Albert White with a tip on the offensive glass, then a steal and an assist. Hafer hits it. What a lift he's given them. Didn't start, but he has ten. And, and use the uh, quick move offensively to score, which is excellent. Walls nearly double dribble. Missouri by nine. And Ricardo Patton's hit with a technical. Well, at this particular point, I, I, I think it was coming. And what happened is the team that got on the run, uh, in this particular case, it was Missouri. Uh, Ricardo had to slow it down somehow. If it had been the other way, Norm would have got the team. But you don't want to get it when your team has possession. Oh, that's always the toughest time to get the, the, the team because it's the two points that you don't get and the two points that they get plus the ball. And they quickly put Brian Brower into the game to shoot the technical free throw. Well, it's hard to do come right off the bench, isn't it? You know what? Uh, it's really hard, Kevin, but this guy has shot 7 million free throws, <laughs> so he's okay. He really has. It's 7 million and 2 now. And, and neither of them were clean, but he had the great touch. Missouri's lead is 11, 15, 45 left. We'll come back to Columbia for more Big 12 action after this. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Fortune 500 companies know that when it comes to renting a car, there's really only one place to go. National Car Rental. Because at most major airports in America, National gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental. Let's go. I remember when Patty learned to drive. And when she bought her first car. And I remember taking her to my shelter insurance agent for car insurance. We've had our car insured with shelter for years. I knew their claim service was the best. And shelter would be there for her. Hi, Daddy. Because shelter's always been there for me. Can you become an investment banker in 24 hours? <laughs> oh, sure. Southwestern Bill Yellow Pages. I need a suit. I need an attache case. Is this for yourself? This is for myself. Okay. I got 24 hours to be an investment banker, and I need a new pair of investment banker shoes. Investment banker shoes? Yeah. Clothing. What size do you wear? Portly. Yes, we'll take the whole building. How long is my hair? Mm -hmm. Two feet. It's all gone now. Say goodbye. Southwestern Bill Yellow Pages. If you can't deal with this, maybe it can't be done. Back in Columbia, Kevin Slayton with the coach, Tony Baroni. The Tigers lead the Buffaloes by 11 with 15.45 left. For all updates and scores, check out the website, www.big12sports.com. Ricardo Patton, Colorado's coach, just hit with a technical. His team had the lead, had actually battled back to get the lead from a 10-0 deficit, and a 12-0 run has put Missouri ahead by 11. He's had his way with Missouri and Norm Stewart since he took over at Colorado. And Ricardo now will, will get back in focus in terms of helping his team win the basketball game. It's frustrating sometimes when you have a situation where you're convinced that the calls are not going your way or e at least even with you, uh, you now you have to find a way to get right back in and, and they will I think they've got another runner Brower playing with three fouls Gilbert and Dooling Missouri going with that three guard lineup they started the game and Gilbert's really given him a lift he misread Parker's cut the turnover walls down really turned it back over crowd wanted a double dribble or a travel he, he lost control he has the right to go get the ball or pass it so it wasn't a travel off the baseline, White played great defense, gets the rebound as well. Mentioned Gilbert giving Missouri a lift with back-to-back -back threes during this 12-0 run. 
He's a very confident young man in terms of the shot. Double figures his last two games. Albert White makes it a 14-0 run. That's a big-time move right there. He took one step back, the man, and turned around and shot. White with nine points now for Missouri. Walls on the drive. We've got a foul. It's probably against Johnny Parker. One, one of the things that will be interesting to see here as the game progresses is how does Dueling react to being in foul trouble? This, this move by Albert White uh, is, is a pro move. He steps into the offensive player and then jumps backwards and makes the shot. Just to run that point again, you don't want to be so tentative that you're not playing your game. So Dooling's got to pick it up a little bit, I think. Woods and Hafer in there for Missouri, and Hafer immediately gets a steal. He's running with Woods, or with Dooling. Now he pulls up, hits it. Hafer has 12 off the Missouri bench. Boy, Hafer's just been outstanding. He looks like he hasn't missed the game. And he is feeling no ill effects of that deep five bruise. Kenny Price off the pick doesn't go. And there's Dooling. See, in that particular case, Dooling had a chance to take the break. White hits the three, and Albert White has come alive. Seven in the second half, 12 in the game. The lead is swelled to 18. With a 17-0 run for Missouri, and with 14-18 left, they're in control. We're back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. Have you been there? Where water and time find their canvas? Where dreams and flowers bloom? Where beyond each horizon lies another? The land offers an open, eternal invitation to roam, explore, wonder. There are amazing things here and there, which is why we try, in little ways, to protect it. Just something to think about the next time you need fuel. Remember life in the fast lane? I do. First you meet, then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sports Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. And now, Regal comes with something that'll make it even easier to drive. Regal by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. Out here in the Corn Belt, a little rain can bring on some strange happenings. Like the stories about Balance, that new pre-emerge herbicide that recharges with a little rain and takes out any new grasses and broad leaves without carryover. So those pesky little weeds that seem to pop up after a dry spell, well, they just don't get a second chance. Hey, who'd have believed it? where Phillips 66 is proud to be the title sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Be sure to stop by your local Phillips 66 station. Fill up with high quality, super clean gasoline, only from Phillips 66, the performance company. At the end of this break, Albert White is way too open. Uh, Colorado did not get back to the perimeter to guard him, and he's a very fine shooter. You've got to know where he is all the time. Missouri fell behind for the first time in this game, 37-36. Since then, they've scored the last 19 points. They, they've come out with a, a quick team because Hard has been out of the game. And they're having everything fall. Price with a nice ball fake. Now pulls up. He's probably a better shooter from three. And Albert White corrals it. It's frustrating as a coach because Ricardo had a great three-point play set up, and he was open. He just didn't get the ball to go down. Albert White in deep against Mosley. Kicks it to Gilbert for three. That one comes out. Well, you don't need 19 to 0 runs will kill you. You're not going to win a lot of games if you let that happen. Walls had it partially blocked. Watch this dunk. That, that will get uh, Keon back in the game a little bit. Walls made a mistake here. He took the shot and just stopped. He didn't get back on defense. And he got it from his high school teammate, Clarence Gilbert. Now White with a block. Hafer ahead to Woods. He can't get it to fall, but he was fouled by Winston. 
you, you really have to love the, the energy of, of Missouri right now. Uh, they, they've got it going in, in a very quick fashion. At the end of this break, Keon Dooling really does get upstairs and actually pulls it down and then dunks it. Reminded me a little bit of yourself, Kevin. <laughs> in my dreams. You could see the crowd coming to his feet as he was coming down the floor. They knew what they were in store for him. Well, that kind of a player, uh, and the thing that I love about Dooling is he's got a great charisma on the court. There are certain kids, when they step on the court, the fans are just anticipating something is going to happen. There are those who would question whether Missouri can win a Big 12 title with two freshmen starting in the backcourt, but I don't think you're one of them, are No, absolutely not. I, those, both of those kids, Gilbert and Dooling, are outstanding players. And Gilbert has gotten a second consecutive start. And now he gets a steal, but he can't save it. It's absolutely amazing how the defensive intensity picks up for your squad once you've made a couple of baskets, a couple of runs, done some good things. Your defensive intensity picks up. He's got great hands here. He, he kept his hands low defensively to steal the ball. you got to give Hay for some credit. What, what a great game he's played. Off the bench, 12 points. Missouri's run is 23 to nothing. At the point where they fell behind for the first time, and now we've got a foul. And it's going to go against Missouri. When, when you get in a situation where you're... The, the opponent really makes a run at you, and obviously that's a tough run, 23 tip. You have got to run your go-to plays. The plays, get the ball in Price's hands, make sure that he has a good look, and go with what he can do for you, at least until you break the string. Colorado's only scored one field goal in the entire second half, and we've played over seven minutes. Winston trying to get inside. Look at the swarming defense, and they come up with a steal. Woods with White and Dooling. For Dooling, too high. Great save, though. And Woods hits it. I, I don't know how he saved the ball. 15 for Woods now, also off the bench. Boy, coming into this game, Brower and Dooling had been making a habit of destroying the backcourts of other teams. Today, it's been Hafer and Woods off the bench. Missouri is doing a wonderful job in terms of the paint. They're doing a great job of attacking the basketball in the, in the paint. Here comes help, Albert White, Schumacher, three people surround the shot, and it almost made the shot. There was great defensive help, and Missouri is playing on a high level of uh, excellence right now. 25 straight points for Missouri. We want Dooling to stay in the game because he's excited for us to watch. Albert White with his pull-up. He's getting hot. Really heating up. Nine in the second half, 14 for the game. Foul against Gilbert. Gilbert is not going to do anything as a defensive player that isn't aggressive. He, he's a vet. Now, Norton's calling him over because they got to do a little rap session with Jack Way, and he really doesn't need to do that. He just has to play aggressively. He did get the foul call. It was a foul. Go back and guard him again. He's Norm Stewart's kind of a player. He's a tough, hard-nosed kid. He doesn't give anything. He's happy to guard Price. He loves to play. You can tell. I love his smile. He's guarding Winston now. They're looking for Price for three out of the corner, and it's just not going Colorado's way. And who gets the oh. rebound? Gilbert. Got upstairs to get the rebound, too. White for three. He's feeling it. 17 for Albert. The run, coach, is 30 to nothing. I don't know that I've ever seen this before. I've never seen 30-point run. And this crowd is loving it. What, what a great stroke Albert White has when he squares up to the basket. He's got great foot position, and, and he, he, can, he can shoot the ball. Missouri fell behind 37-36, and since then, 30 straight points. This is a good shot by Price. Uh, the ball is off the back of the rim, and uh, they're not getting any offensive rebounds either, so it's, it's been a long stretch for them. 
You look at Missouri when they have the small lineup in the game, and you think, well, how can they get rebounds? But their guards, from Brian Grower, who's just six feet tall, to Gilbert and Dooling, hit the boards hard. And, and, and they're very aggressive players. It's not like they are uh, players who just slice. They're physical players, even though they're not that big. 8% from the field for Colorado. They had only one shot fall in the second half, and we have 11 and a half minutes remaining. So in almost nine minutes, they've scored one basket. And you have a fine line now here for Colorado. You have to be patient. You know you're going to have to run some bo points on the board. No bad shots. Albert White turning it up defensively. This crowd appreciates defense. Five seconds on the shot clock. Walls on the drive gets fouled. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is, this is a good call. The reason it's a good call is because Gilbert, he gets his left hand, his left arm, as a forearm, and he's trying to use it as an antenna. Uh, you'll see it here as, as Jockway go by. Right, goes by right there. That's a foul. You can't do that. Buffalo's inbound, and Jaquay Walls has been shut out of the second half, as has Kenny Price. Of course, they all have him. Schumacher with the foul. He wasn't going to let Mosley get an easy one. I, I, think, I think Schumacher made a good effort to get over there. It was a hard foul in, in terms of getting there, and he, he really didn't try to block the shot. I, I, I might have called that an intentional foul. I really would have. Mosley, who has two free throws in the second half, now has three. Colorado's only scored five points in the second half. Three of them have been from the free throw line, and the 30-0 run is over. Well, when I talk about intentional, I mean going after a player as opposed to going after the ball. Get up, go! And Schumacher grabs the rebound. So the run is over momentarily. Missouri trying to keep its stranglehold on their spot in second place. We've got a foul against Colorado. Aki Thomas gets his first foul. The, the officials are going to have to be careful here and not let this game get any more physical than it is. Dooling looking to inbound it. Better hurry up. Does so to White. Back to Dooling underneath. Good ball fake. Can't get it, but follows with his own tip. That's called second effort and... Uh, beyond second effort. Dooling has seven, now gets a partial block on Walls, and Albert White has it. He likes to run the break himself. Three on two, he's got Gilbert, and he has it blocked. Great play by Kenny Price. And Price off the baseline leaves it for Mosley, and that's their second bucket of the second half. And Missouri gets careless and throws it away. And, and, and Norm will, will, will calm this down a little bit. It, you, you have to love this play by Dooling. Uh, it's a great pass by Albert White. Good fake. He elevates up and over, and he just bounces right back to the ball. Great nose for the ball. Albert White's liable to tell him he messed up my assist. Albert would be upset. He's only made every three that he's taken. He's getting every rebound in the paint. He wants some assists today. <laughs> Second chance points is kind of interesting here because they've done this 19 to 1 second chance points without the big guy in the game. Bonnie Harz with foul trouble the entire game. When he left this game with his fourth, Colorado took the lead. But a 30 0 run erased that lead in a hurry. Mosley and Price in a two man game. And there's the pick and roll to Mosley. Strong to the hole. They nearly got an offensive goaltend. The reason the pick and roll is working is because Missouri is so tight on the help side defensively that they're not coming across to help the guy who's being, who's being screened. I've always been surprised that not more teams run a pick and roll. Yeah, it's a tough play to defense because you have to make a decision. With, with uh, Missouri right now, they have over 13 offensive rebounds, and that usually translates into 12 or 13 baskets, Kevin. And it has today for them. Their lead is 68-42, 26-point lead. There's Doolin. That won't fall for him. Gilbert trying to keep it alive, but he lost it out of bounds. It makes Doolin so effective and very difficult to guard because he can do it. He didn't make the shot, but he can take it to the glass, so you have to guard that. 
but he also can pull back and pull, pull the shot on you, so he's really tough to guard. Monty Hart's back in replacing Schumacher from Missouri. Mosley goes out, and Renfro's back in for Colorado. If I'm Monty right now, I say to myself, okay, no silly fouls. I'm going to finish this game and play the rest of this game without committing a foul. He has nine minutes in which to do that. Colorado beat Missouri in Boulder, 82-63 earlier in the season. Kenny Price on a pull-up, but Wood's got a piece of it. There's Albert White. Well, he's alive on the boards. That's 11 rebounds for Albert White. And 15 points, of course, a double-double. That's not really Price's game. He, he needs to be a receive the penetration as opposed to trying to do it. White's been feeling it. Goes hard to the basket. Can't get it to fall. Thomas clears it for the buffs. Here comes Jaguay Walls. He's been really quiet in the second half. Fishes to Thomas, but it's a foul against Albert White. This break, and this is this to me is an amazing play by Jaguay Walls because he is going at, 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 on his break. He is penetrating, and look where he's looking right now. He is no nowhere near looking to where he's going to throw the ball. That that's a great pass. Thomas, the 60% free throw shooter, takes to the line. Thomas it has to do a little bit more for Colorado. Ricardo likes him as a player a lot, and uh, I, he had a great freshman year in the league. He's been a little inconsistent this year. He's a guy that they need to play big in the paint. Hafer and Brower in from Missouri, replacing Woods and Monty Harge. Thomas goes one for two. Albert White nearly lost it. This crowd loves watching Keon Doolin play. I, I love watching him play. <laughs> He's fun to watch. He's he has got a nice six. presence, Kevin. He has seven. Not many freshmen have that, although there are some great freshman guards in this country today. But it's it's a gift. Here we go. Here we go. That's a quick step in his. It's amazing. Albert White with a tip. Another tip. Keep tipping. It finally goes in, but he draws the foul. Doolin has an excellent first step to the basket. He has an outstanding ability to use that hesitation dribble. I'll tell you the other thing that's amazing about him, the more I watch him, he's able to put the ball up very, very high on the backboard and make baskets. He, that shot actually was above the square. It didn't go in, but it was a shot that's very tough to take. Albert has 16 points for Missouri. This is the best I've seen him play, Kevin. He, he's got a nice bounce to his game. He's got good follow through on what he's doing. He's rebounding very well. Actually, actually I have him for 19 points now. We'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. Shoot for the loot this college basketball season at your neighborhood Phillips 66 station. It's your chance to win the grand prize package of five years of free Phillips 66 gasoline, a trip to Las Vegas, and two free tickets to the Phillips 66 Big 12 basketball tournament, where one shot could win you up to $100,000 in cash, plus thousands of other prizes from Phillips 66 and Pepsi. Enter at participating Phillips 66 locations and shoot for the loot today. Hello, honey. Yeah, um, it, you wrote down chips, and there's a lot of them. Okay, I don't see 2%, but I see there's red. Uh, do you want uh, crunchy or smooth? Ultra dry or super dry or, well, she just took the last one. The simple truth is you need all the air time you can get. That's why Southwestern Bell has flexible plans that let you talk longer than ever. Paper or plastic? Honey, last one, I swear. I'm just... She hung up. The hottest looking compact car on the road today. 16 valve Z Tech engine. Standard rear quadrilink suspension. 24 hour roadside assistance for total security. The 99 Ford ZX2. Need another reason? How about up to $1,500 cash back on the hot new ZX2? There's only one place to get a deal like that on a car like this at your local Ford dealer now. 
A Studio 66 update from the Big Ten in Evanston, Illinois. It's Northwestern against Indiana. Check out Steve LaFleur, who's pouring them in from the outside. The Wildcats have never been to the NCAA tournament. They're on the verge, especially if they win today, leading 39-35 over the Hoosiers at halftime. Back to Kevin and Coach Barone in Columbia. Thanks a lot, Doug. Our score, you see it. Missouri hit Colorado with a 30 to nothing run in this second half as Keon Dooling and Albert White have sparked them in the second half. I love Dooling's poise. Uh, he, he's got a really wonderful mentality for the game. And, and I think you might underestimate the fact that the game has gotten a little out of hand here, but he has played very intelligently, even with his fox. He picked up two quick fouls in the first half. As a result, played only 10 minutes in the first half. But he's played the entire second half without picking up a foul. Harge is back in the game, and I, I hope that he said to himself, hey, I want to continue to play. Walls feeds Mosley, but Dooling knocks it away from him, and it belongs to Colorado. Walls has the ability to make a pass across his body. I would discourage it unless I had him on my team. <laughs> Buffalo's trying to add some points because they've been so cold in the second half. Only a few field goals for them. And that 30-0 run takes the life out of them. That White has been a monster on the glass there. He's really played well. 14 rebounds for Albert White. And he really took this game on his shoulders after Hards fouled out. Or not fouled out, but left the game at four fouls. Missouri's being very patient here. This is a smart way for them to play right now. They can work and milk the shot clock. Probably could run the shot clock down and never take another shot. Dueling to the basket has it slapped out. Look at Monty Hards hustling. Oh, the crowd will love that effort. Now, he, he should never have done that because now Norm knows how <laughs> quick he can be. He ran that ball down, and I mean, he went after that ball. Watch his quickness on this loose ball. I, would you like to get in the way of that? <laughs> I, not only would I not like to, there's no way I would. That's a freight train coming at you. A lot of NFL scouts might have seen that and thought, hey, you look good in nose tackles. Renfro's trying to move against the immovable object, and he hooks it in left-handed and then whips it, Monty Hart. Monty did the right thing. Uh, he did a good job of getting big. Uh, Renfro just made a heck of a shot. Hard wasn't going to follow him. He wants to be in the game. He wants to stay in the game, and that's smart. Jeff Hafer back in there. What a spark he's given Missouri off the bench. Playing with a deep five rules, they didn't know if he would play at all. He just started the practice again yesterday. But he gave him a big spark when he came off the bench in the first half. He had eight points. He's had four more in the second half. The, the last shot by Renfro, you can see Harge here. Makes, he has good position. There's no problem with that. He's getting big. You could have called a foul on him probably if you wanted to. I wouldn't have called it in the beginning of the game, so why call it now? Keon Dooling to the line where he's one for two today, a 73% free throw shooter on the season. Keon with just seven points, but a lot of that is due to foul time. It's really interesting uh, being in turn and not coaching here uh, this year because what you hear is all of a sudden you'll hear Keon, Keon all over the place so that they get him the ball to see what he can do with it. He misses the second one. He has eight points. Missouri's lead, 71-45. Renfro sets a pick for Price, but Clarence Gilbert, who's played a very good game, even though he only has six points. Now Hafer with the steal. He's got dueling. One-on-one. -on -one. It's been here 32 years, but I don't know if he's ever seen that. Price misses. The rebound knocked away by Hafer. Bonnie Arch held his ground, but they're going to call him for a slip foul. No, 
Well, they call it on Hayford. Let, let's look at this play by Dooling. It's absolutely, absolutely trem tremendous. First of all, he comes up with the steal or knocks it out of the hands. And now what he's going to do here, he's going to look like he passes it and takes it to the glass. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow is the only thing you can say. <laughs> He's talking to the official. The official's probably saying, wow. The official's asking him if he walked. <laughs> <laughs> he says no. See, Monty was just in the wrong place that time. The loose ball, he came across. What Monty has to learn to do a little bit better is he needs to square up to the offensive player. The offensive player gets on his side, and then he creates fouls. Smith hits the second one. Brian Brown replaces Hayford. He'll get a great ovation. He did it all today. Well, I'm happy for him. An excellent job today. And showing more confidence in his jumper, which many times yeah. he hasn't shown confidence in, but he's taking it today. Johnny Parker in there as well from Missouri, along with Brian Brower. Brower hampered by foul trouble all day long. I like Missouri's movement right now. They're, they're not trying to do something they can't do. They're really taking some clock. Keon Dooley tied up and is fouled by Smith. Dooley has the, the ability to, to use his quickness, and he doesn't look like he's going to be quick. It, it, it's tough to guard him. Uh, excellent pullback on that crossover. He's got good size, too. That's the other thing. I, I think, uh, Kevin, is he legitimately 6'3 and a half? Uh, is he 6'4 or is he 6'3? He's, he's big. He's big. You got to give him 6'3 for sure. Yeah. 11 yeah. points in the game. <laughs> he, he's 11 foot when he jumps, too. <laughs> He's electrified this crowd, 12 points now. Missouri up 75-46. Look how quickly he picks that ball up. Missouri comes out, three on two. Look at the feed, the wide, he finishes! Well, do you need to see any more? <laughs> in, in front of the defender. Jaquay Walls, out of frustration, fires the ball at Brian Brown. Gilbert steps in. They went at it a little earlier, didn't they? This, this move here by Dooling, where he takes it around his back and then goes in front, is an interesting move. He uh, he makes a great pass at the end of the break <laughs> also. How awesome is that to watch? I, I don't think Walls here was really trying to create a problem. Uh, he was trying to save the ball going out of bounds, and he threw it in hard, but he was trying to make a play. I, I don't see that as a as too aggressive of a play. You remember the last time these teams played in, in Boulder? Dueling and one of the Colorado players had words, and that's what uh, really started the renaissance from Missouri, because after that game, Dooling was taken out of the game, didn't play again, and after that game, uh, a 10-day hiatus from Missouri, or an eight-day hiatus, and Dooling came out, started against Kansas, and Missouri's been a different team ever since. Well, and I think that's credit to Norm, and it's credit to the kid who accepted the criticism and said, okay, I'm going to do what you want me to do. Brian Grower comes out of the ball game as Walls hits one of the free throws. If I was going to guard Dooley, what I would do initially would, I would pressure him and pressure him, and then as soon as he got the ball, back off of him. And then pray. This coast-to-coast -coast effort is short. Johnny Parker, I think, called for the foul. We'll wait and see if they give it to Parker. That's who gets it. He really does a good job here of taking the ball to the glass, and he, he shoots a little fade away. Uh, sometimes the circus shots go in, sometimes they don't. With Dooling, I don't think any shot is a circus shot. They're all good shots for him. He's telling the official he was fouled. 30-point Missouri lead, Renfro at the free-throw line.
Jones back in now for the Buffaloes. Been a long second half for Colorado. They started out and went ahead. They scored the first four points in the second half and took the lead. But ever since then, well, they've only had, they've only scored 14 points the entire second half. Ricardo Patton picked up a technical. Missouri is a physical defensive team, and then they've been able to play with good physical presence today. Dooling gets up high to get another rebound. Boy, if he stays at Missouri four years, it's going to be an exciting tenure. Johnny Parker hits a three. His first basket of the game. They, they all fall when you're on this kind of a run. Gilbert slapped it away. Timeout on the floor, 348 left. We're coming back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. Physics, science, and technology. The exciting field of engineering. <laughs> yes, engineering. With a career in engineering, you can accomplish many things. From microchips to potato chips, engineers turn ideas into reality. But you don't have to be a straight-A student, and it's not just for guys anymore. All you need is math, science, and ambition. Learn more during National Engineers Week. Just ask your science or math teacher. Engineers make a world of difference. It is a place where the finest is appreciated in private. Because when one has truly arrived, there is no need to announce it. Park Avenue by Buick, the power of understatement. Hey, grab me some chow. For you, my friend, no sweat. Bang. <laughs> Want personal service? You got it at Sonic. Great food, too, like our famous chicken strip dinner. Served hot and crispy with fries, Texas toast, gravy, and a medium Dr. Pepper, all for a special low price. And this month, try our chocolate-covered cherry sweetheart shake. Pretty sweet service, huh? We'll be home before the commercials are over. Drive in for a change at Sonic. Kevin Slayton and the coach, Tony Baroni with you in Columbia, Missouri with an explosive second half, and that player, an explosive player, as we take a look at our best play of the game, brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people, and this is Keon Doolin. He goes behind his back and in front, and then let's give Albert Wright White credit for running the court. He's had a wonderful game today, Albert. Have you ever seen that move before that Dooling put on? Now, the only time I saw it was Allen Iverson did it last year a couple times on some highlights, but from a freshman in college, I, I don't think so. <laughs> a block by White, but he'll probably be called for the foul, either he or Parker. If it's Parker, he's gone, but it's called against White. And Colorado now wants to maintain their intensity. They want to maintain their poise. Uh, they want to do a good job on both ends of the court, especially on the defensive end, where, where Missouri will really try to control the tempo now. Missouri will go to 18 and 5 with this win and 9 and 3 in the conference, and they have Oklahoma coming in Monday night. That, that will be a great game. Oklahoma is playing well today. And, of course, both of those teams will start Monday night, tied for second, unless Texas should lose today or over this weekend. Missouri finishes the season at Texas. That could be a game for the championship. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be a great game. Missouri's spreading the court now. This is one of their open court offenses that they run, and uh, they run this all the time, so this is not just a delay game. The crowd would love to see dueling. Put on some more fireworks. Three minutes remaining in this ballgame. Woods forces it, hits it. That doesn't go when you're not winning. No, that, that, that shot, uh, you can't do anything about that particular shot. Woods has 17 off the bench. Hafer had 12 off the bench. Mosley working on White. White goes for the block, can't get it. Parker battling for the loose ball. Who are they going to give it to? They'll give it to Colorado. When you see a game like this and, and you see the score, uh, you, you'll forget a couple of things. Dooling and White getting a great ovation. Standing ovation from this crowd. 
Well, if you're a player in high school or Little League and you get discouraged, just remember Keon Doolin, who had the rough go in Boulder, Colorado, and how, mighty, how mightily things have turned around for him. And, and good players react the way he did. Um, he, he had made a couple of mistakes. Uh, Norm talked to him about it, and the kid came back with a tremendous attitude. And one tremendous game after another. And one tremendous wraparound dribble. Yeah. <laughs> and then the fake wraparound. We can't forget that. <laughs> That's right. Johnny Parker up strong for the board, and Thomas fouls him. He might be the first player that, that we're talking about who sets up the wraparound with the fake wraparound. <laughs> and gets buckets out of both of them. <laughs> Let, let's not forget the, the uh, contributions today off the bench of Hayford Woods. That was a big key in that first half because Harge was out of the game. You're probably looking at the freshman of the year in the Big 12 Conference. I, I think he is richly deserving of that particular honor. Johnny Parker misses the free throw. Yeah, the big guy in Tech, Andy Ellis, has played well. Uh, and Boshi at Kansas has done a wonderful job. But this guy is something special, I think. Parker drives that one home. He has four points for Missouri. 83-49, the Tigers. Well, 20 wins is usually a magical number for the NCAA. But to get into the tournament, Missouri getting closer. With today's win, they have 18. Wallace, nice pass, and Aki Thomas almost didn't see it. The, the effort of Walls in terms of giving the ball up today has been outstanding. He's made some great assist passes. And getting back to that 20 uh, point, uh, 20 win season, what happens is a lot of teams now are getting 20 wins. And so what you have to do is your strength of schedule, your wins on the road, all become really, really important. And even though, though you look at Missouri's last two years on the road were nightmares, this year they've had a very good road record. And how you finish down near the end, Kevin, is really uh, something that I think the committee looks at very closely. Missouri with four games left after today, two here and two on the road. But the two road ones are toughies at Oklahoma State and at Texas. And one of the road games, or one of the home games against Oklahoma here. They finish, of course, with Iowa State here as well. The fans will be a factor for Missouri uh, down near the end here in terms of the rest of the season. Parker steps up and hits another three. He has seven in the second half. That's the most confident I've seen him shoot the basketball. Both of his threes came from that spot. Thomas inside, follows his own shot, and gets it to roll down. Six for Thomas in the second half. Minute and a half remaining. Brian Grauer runs the show now for Missouri with Keon out of the game. Norm Stewart calls a 20-second timeout. He wants to get a couple of walk-ons in the game. Mark Wampler coming into the game. Kenji Stevenson as well. We'll come back after this. Today's game is brought to you by Buick. Isn't it time for a real car? By Phillips 66, makers of super clean gasolines and Trop Arctic motor oil. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Shelter Insurance, for your life, home, car, farm, or business, Shelter Insurance will always be there for you. And by Las Vegas, it's anything and everything. Make your escape today. Call your travel agent. Keon Dooling resting on the bench as two walk-ons, Mark Wampler and Kenji Stevenson, come into the game, along with freshman Matt Rowan. This is a great throw for the walk-ons. Uh, by the time they have their children, they will have played 25 minutes in this game. <laughs> and I'll bet if they get it, it's going up. Oh, it has to go up. Schumacher throws it away, looking for Rowan, cutting the baseline. Exactly a minute left. Missouri leads by 32. If you're just joining us, a 30-point second-half run for Missouri led the way. And I, I thought in the run, during the run, Colorado defensively was working pretty hard. They had some tough shots offensively that didn't go down, and then the thing just mushroomed. 
Clarence Gilbert spearheaded it with back-to-back -back threes. Great defensive play. Dueling, of course, instrumental, as was John Woods and Jeff Hafer. Coaches love to talk about team efforts, but you look up and down that lineup today, and that's what it was. Albert White was huge in the second half. And, and they, they did a lot of things with the ball offensively very well, and that, that's something that normally we'd be real happy with. Under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Renfro with that left hand again. They, they've done a good job on that pick and roll all game. The fans are looking for one of the walk-ons to shoot the basketball. And there's one of them, Wampler. There's the other one, Stevenson. He's going to the hole, and he gets fouled. Norm yelled out at him to run the offense <laughs> at that particular point. And so I think Wampler got a little nervous and decided he better pass the ball. <laughs> Well, Stevenson will go to the line. He hasn't attempted a free throw all year. Misses that one. He's trying to get the, to the uh, line score in tomorrow's paper. Norm Stewart told, tells him to step off the free throw line and then uh, get rid of that one out of your mind. That's right. And nail this one. And he did. Good job. If you miss a free throw, you, look, you really do like to step back. But if you make it, you stay put. Absolutely. Smith battling hard. You know, Colorado plays with great effort even when the score is out of hand. That'll end it for Missouri, 87-56. The final score, a big win for Missouri. They go to 9-3 and 18-5. and five. Let's send it from Columbia after this big win for Missouri to Studio 66, where Doug Bell is standing by to bring you highlights and updates. Kevin Slayton, thank you very much. Bloody Saturday continues on the Big 12 Network, a blowout in Columbia, and as you'll see, Texas A&M taking it on the chin in Norman against Oklahoma. And we welcome those of you who are seeing Missouri defeat Colorado in Columbia. We're in the final minute and a half here in Norman, Oklahoma. It has been a day for the Sooners. They lead Texas A&M.